All right, let's try this again. The first time the whole system just crashed. Never had that happen before at the Casa del Rojo Vikingo. Thank you for being here an hour later. As you pop in, somebody give me a sound check. Don, what's going on? Sound check. I know it's, uh, I didn't announce this one. Turkey leg, what's going on? <clears throat> sound check, give me a sound check. It showed good sound, but before I keep running, I want to always check. Five by five, thank you, Jeff Senior, appreciate that. Um, Miss Dahlia, thanks. Listen, 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 Swano saving. <laughs> I don't know if you guys, we'll, we'll diverge since this comment's up from, from Scott Hangen. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to the 45's tweets today, but verbatim, he, we, we as a country will not let what's happened on November 3rd stand for the illegality of it. Whew. I would uh, tell all of you folks to stock up on food and water in your house because it's going to get ugly. And Juan Osevin said it's going to be, it's going to go military. It's going to have to to handle it. Let me just put a few of you folks up. Don't forget the people that won the lanyards on the first stream that I had to delete because um, the whole stream just crashed. Like everything just went away. Don't forget to send me your shipping address to support at redvikingtrucker.com. Let me go back through here. Tamara, what's going on? Quad State Cameras, good to have you here. Mile Claimer, sound is good. Listen, let's get back to this. All the things that'll kill you being a CDL 18 wheel big rig truck driver. Please walk over and smash the like or the dislike button just for that. We already have to worry about four wheelers. You have to worry about the cargo you carry. You got to worry about you know, your health, like, you know, one of the guys when I was in CDL school, one of the guys they brought through uh, had a really, let me put a few more of you folks up, had a, he had a, they brought him in, I guess it was part of his community service. I guess it was, he had to come in and talk to us. He was, he said, listen, he said, I was a trucker. He said, I ended up going to jail. Um, he said, I was in real, and he came in, he was probably five foot 10, five eleven. He was still a little bit hefty, but he said he had lost like 200 pounds. And he said, I was doing everything wrong. I was eating wrong. Um, and he said, I, I ended up falling asleep coming down the interstate. Tamara, Laura Bowersox, good to have you here. Jeff Senior again, thank you for the five by five. Let me leave that email up because if you guys send me anything at all, always send it to support at redvikingtrucker.com. That's the simplest way to remember it, especially if you have a shipping address. The shipping address for the lanyards can be either uh, a P.O. box or a physical address. Either one. Philip Congolero, let me put this back up. But anyway, he came through. He said, listen, I fell asleep one night. He said, I was eating all the wrong foods. I put on a ton of weight, fell asleep. And he said, when I woke up, he said there was people that had been fatally injured in a car. He said, I have no recollection of it. And he said, I wasn't, I wasn't drinking. He said, but I just, I had no stamina. I had no, I had no get up and go. And he said, I was driving and I shouldn't have been. And it cost people their lives. He ended up getting put in jail. They brought him through our CDL school to tell his story. And it was kind of shocking when you think about it. Like you're driving on the road. If you're a trucker and something happens, you're going to, it's always, it's always your fault. Always your fault. And that's why I have my own dash cam. All these links I'm going to give you are all on redvikingtrucker.com, except for the CO2 link. I'm going to, this, this stream was really about CO2, carbon monoxide, but I want to, I want to tie everything in. Let me show you this. People drive these 18-wheelers these down the road, and you think you have all sorts of protection because you're this big, huge uh, you know, tractor trailer. Well, I want you to look at something. Let me make sure this is shown on the screen. I'm going to make the screen large for just a second. Look at this. This picture, yep, it's showing large on the screen. Let me pull Keith's comment off so you see more of it. Look at how these these cabs, especially this one here, look at how the cab melted completely. Now this this vehicle was pulled in, he pulled in forward. So it it flamed out the back of his his tractor. But no, actually that was that was a tractor too. Wait a second, wait a second. I didn't see that. That's his actual trailer. This is look what's left of this guy's tractor. Look what's left of this guy's tractor. I have seen this happen more than once at truck stops. Uh, where we parked when I was with the previous company, a truck, a, a day cab had parked on the lot. Something happened. The day cab caught on fire. Two other sleeper cabs on the, the lot we parked our tractors at. Two other uh, tra tractors that are sleeper cabs caught on fire next to it. People have this impression that these things are huge animals. 
and they are huge animals, but this whole top portion, the whole side, everything is plastic. Like these things are plastic. These are not like metal. You don't have a metal roll cage. Look at this. Look what's left. Look what's left. And this is just from a this is just from a fire that broke out on the vehicle. Obviously, it broke out on one of maybe this one, and it caught on with these three. So I'm guessing this one caught on fire. Then this one got the, the lion's share of the other's flames. This one got some of it. But when you look at that, let me try to make that larger. Let me try to make that larger and pull the screen over. Look at how little is left. Can you guys see that? Let me take myself off the screen. Look at how little is left of this tractor. There's nothing. All you have is the engine block that's left. That's all you have now. Was this guy a sleeper cab? I don't know, but when, I'm going to show you some other stuff. When you're in this tractor and it's running everything, even if it's not running, because like the one on my, the one on our yard, it wasn't running as far as I know when it caught on fire. Whoever had been driving it turned it off and something happened and it, it fused up or it, it shorted something out. And then two other sleeper cabs, like when I pulled on the next day to go onto the yard to get my tractor, these, like the, the one, the day cab was just destroyed. It was the same as the one on the right here. And then the other two next to it look like they look like a mixture between these two. Like they weren't quite as bad as this, but this is all just plastic. You have this you have this impression that these tractors give you protection. Even in an accident, you don't have a lot of protection other than your seatbelt, because this is all a polymer composite that's, that circles your 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 body all night long when you're driving or all day long. Look at that. And this one is completely gone. This one's completely melted other than his engine block. And his and his and his uh his axles, everything else is gone. The purpose of this stream tonight. Hold on, checked into the who is linked to the wax. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Um, they tell us how to eat. That's from Keith. Yeah, Keith, I had you up earlier. Yep. But CO2 poisoning is what began this. But then I began just doing research. Let me put up this 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 comment. Or this, this story, this was on uh, CDL Life. This was the wife. And you guys that smoke out there, you guys and girls that smoke out there, you have a lot tougher time even than most because you already have a, a high tolerance for CO2 in your body because, well, let me pull this up. Where'd I go? Where'd it go? Yep, here we go. This was from, this is by Melissa Cook. She's, I guess, a, a writer for CDL Life. This was back in, I think, 2013. But there's more stories than this. They have four children, animals, and a home to run. He brings, you know, the home, the bacon, so to say. And again, this is on CDL Life, I think, from 2013. Um, so they went on a three-week vacation, all the kids did. And the two oldest were at home with one of their husband's longtime best friends. So they, she said, let me get on the road. She gets on the road with, with her husband. And she said right away, she began going, he's feeling really, really, really bad. She got loaded up, proceeded to hit the road about an hour into her first trip with her husband. She got a terrible headache. She popped some Tylenol, hoping it would go away, but it didn't. She became nauseous. She told her husband she needed to stop and use the restroom. And again, most of the truckers out there that this would happen to, especially, you know, if you've been out there running. Now, her husband was a smoker. He wasn't affected by this as much as she was because he already had CO2. If you're a smoker, you already have more CO2 in your body than I do, and you have a tolerance for it. So anyway, she said they ate and got back on the road. She kept smelling a faint smell of exhaust. Her husband insisted he couldn't smell anything, even though she could. She insisted he couldn't smell, or he insisted he couldn't smell anything. Several times that night, she smelled the exhaust, didn't think much of it because he's a trucker. He knows what he's doing. She didn't want to push the issue. And then she also didn't want to make him think that she was just trying to push him, you know, get out of going on this this ride. They stopped at a truck stop for the night. He turned on the bunk air conditioner and there was the smell again for her. And of course, he couldn't smell it. So she laid down and fell asleep, unaware of the hidden danger. She woke three hours later. She had a huge headache again. She felt very wobbly on her feet and had severe flu like symptoms. She thought she was just catching a cold like you want to start explaining this stuff away. OK. And by the way, let me put this up on the link. In the description of the video, there is a, I have a $32 CO2 and uh, fire alarm monitor that can be put anywhere in your truck as long as it's not covered up. And it'll saw, it'll cover two things. It has a 10 year battery. It's like 32 bucks. I have the link in the description of the video because I have my own story and I was sharing that story when I got cut off before. Let me go back to this. Let me go back to her story. This story is, the story is frightening when you really finish reading it. 
I'll try to put this this story in the link of the video down below as well. Okay, once once we're done. On the third day of the trip, she told her husband, Steve, hey, something's wrong. I smell exhaust fumes. He kept telling her, I don't smell it. I don't smell it. And she felt like she was calling him a liar, which made her mad. She looked up CO2 poisoning. And according to the Mayo Clinic, now some of you truckers, you need to pay attention. This is especially the ones that are smokers, because look at all these symptoms. You have a dull headache. You have weakness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, confusion, blurred vision, loss of consciousness. Now, again, you're going to have a higher tolerance not to feel these things because you're already a smoker, because CO2 connects. And I'm not going to find all the slides I had for the first video, but CO2 connects to the red blood cells 200 times faster than oxygen cells do. They attach. So you smokers out there, you, you might even be in a truck right now that you literally shouldn't be driving. Because in her case, let's look at this. In her case, let me make this large again while I, tell, while I finish telling her story. In her case, let's go down. If you're sleeping, you can be overcome by the fumes and never wake up. Okay. So after she's reading the symptoms to her husband, he told her he has headaches all the time and feels sleepy. Okay, feels sleepy, but not enough to fall asleep at the wheel. He was just tired all the time. So his eyes, his, his eyes burned all the all the time, and they were constantly red. They stopped to get gas. He smelled the exhaust coming from under, under the hood. He figured they had a small leak. They called the Iowa 80 truck stop, made an appointment. They got to Iowa 80. They went in for showers, and then took the, had the mechanic look at it. The mechanic, listen to this. This this is where it gets crazy. The mechanic looked at the truck. The mechanic said the system, the exhaust system was not leaking and there was nothing they could do to fix it there. So she, they went to the truck and got some sleep and she said, there's no way. So she threw a fit. She said, I'm not getting back in this truck. And she threatened to rent a car and go home. Now, this is one of those, this is one of those family trips that everything is going wrong. And I'm sure old Steve was like, man, I'm just trying to you know, make my money. And you're just looking for every reason not to be in the truck is what he's thinking. But he was a smoker. She wasn't. Okay. She called us or he called his boss at 2 a.m. There his time, the boss's time, told her the situation. And he said that even though he didn't smell anything, the wife said she wasn't getting back in the truck. So they told her to take they told him to take it to a place in Illinois, which is where her husband's company is located. OK, and look at this. Look at this. They get to the company's facility. They originally thought it might be a cracked head. They found the bolt going all the way into the manifold had broken. And it was blowing exhaust into the air system on the passenger side, which is why she could smell it easier, but not him. But he was also a smoker. So he constantly had CO2 in his body. They had a mild case of carbon monoxide poisoning. OK. I will tell you this. Let's go back and look at these symptoms. How many of you truckers tonight or later that watch this video, by the way, thank you for being here. Walk over and smash the like or the dislike button with your Viking, your werewolf or your boiling frog paw. How many of you folks, I wish I could make that smaller, dull he headache. How many of you folks right now, this is you, dull headache, weakness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, confusion, blurred vision, loss of consciousness. Now, let's stay with these top couple ones. I'm not talking about you folks that are sitting out there tonight. You've been watching a football game. You've been drinking. I'm not talking about you folks. I'm talking about a daily basis. You have a, a dull, throbbing headache. You're weak. You're dizzy. Nausea, vomiting. Now, this vomiting might be a little bit more severe, obviously. Shortness of breath. How many truckers have shortness of breath? How many truckers smoke? How many truckers are currently overweight by 100, 200 pounds? All of that plays in. You're confused. Blurred vision. How many of that all plays in together, right? So the stream was originally exactly about that. CO2 poisoning. Let me get back to the story that I was telling. Hopefully the stream will be good during this. Let me put a few more of you up. Um, there's a, a couple of comments. I'm going to try and go a little bit slower because the blonde Viking wife is down for the night. So let me. Uh... Okay, Alan Patty. Truckers Ace, what's going on? Hey, Truckers Ace, you need to change your screen. You need to change your Facebook, dude. Truckers Ace, you quit smoking over a year ago. You feel better. Listen, I don't. I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how the smokers out there do that and also eat bad and then try to, you know, have any stamina to drive a truck. Um, Thomas Barber, what's going on? Yeah, the sense of smell and taste is also much better not smoking. Keith Terrible, Keith Terrill, Keith Terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Keith Terrell, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a hard eye because I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with phonetics that I learned in school. It's a pup, as a mere werewolf pup. Just happened at the TA in Troutdale, Oregon. They started it started by an electric blanket and took out three trucks. Matter of fact, I think I found that picture online. I think, and it might have been that picture. That was a flying J. Was the Troutdale? Oh, you said it was a TA in Troutdale. Okay. I'm just telling you, folks. Let me tell. Let me tell you the story. You have to check the watts of everything around you. What caused it? I don't know if you're talking to Keith, Ms. Collins, Gail Collins. Good to have you here. All sorts of stuff over on RedVikingTrucker.com. If you have a significant other that's out driving a truck, see. I have links to everything that I use. Everything on that. Everything on my site that has a link to it that you can go buy is on my site, and it's stuff I use. I vouch for it. That was two fingers, not just one, pointing at me because I vouched for it. Exhaust leaks. And what, let me tell you what happened with me. Um, I was coming up to Montana to load up off-road diesel, and I was running that to one of the mines in Idaho because they always had you run different places to load up if you were doing different locations than the rail yard that I was doing pretty much all the time. So I had to run up to Montana, get loaded up. I get up there and there were four entries into the loading racks and you came around this turn, you came around a, a left-hand turn and I, the only rack that was, that was going to be open next was the very, very far rack, but there was a trailer and a tractor parked on the second rack from the, from the right. So I came around him because I have a, I had a long nose Kenworth. I had to pull really, really deep into the turn. And then when I turned back to get into the lane, to get into the rack that was open, to avoid hitting him, I cut really, really, really hard deep into the turn and I clipped with my uh, one of my stacks because my stacks in that long nose were on the side of the truck right next to where I sat. I clipped one of the stacks on an overhead piece of metal. And as soon and I was going like like under a mile an hour. So as soon as I heard it happen, I stopped. I didn't want to back up because I wasn't sure if I'd connected to something. I got out and the guy behind me had watched this happen. He runs over, goes, listen, he said, all you gotta do is back up. I'll help you, blah, blah, blah because I had to worry about this guy that had his trailer kind of blocking my lane. Well, long story short, I had bent the stack, even going a little bit of miles per hour, I'd bent the stack maybe two or three inches. So it was pointing like that one stack. I had two stacks, one stack's pointing down, like not all the way like that, probably like that. I didn't think twice about it. I called, I called my company. He said, don't worry about it. Next time it's in the shop, we'll bend it back straight. Not a big deal. And I kept, I kept running. Well, I slept in my truck all the time. Like I didn't get out of the truck to go to a hotel unless the truck was in the shop. You know, I was in my truck and I don't know if you guys have been up in the Northwest this time of the year. It is cold as you know, who's tot -tots up there. So I always, always, always had either my bunk heater or my bunk AC, especially in the summer months, even in Idaho, it got, it got, you know, super hot during the summer months. So I, had the, I had the truck running all the time, pretty much. Anyway, on my cast to have eye surgery, I'll reach out to him. I'll talk to him. Um, but anyway, so I'm in my truck. Didn't think twice about it. I was more worried about getting, you know, getting something taken out of my pay for clipping that. Nothing. I get back. I, sh I start shutting down every night. And like for the next week, week and a half, I would wake up groggy. I would wake up like just feeling really rough. And I thought, man, I bet you. And I, I took the truck into the shop. They fixed the stack. Everything stopped. I, I no longer woke up feeling groggy and feeling, you know, just overcome by stuff. Um, so Mike Jones has to have eye surgery Thursday. Well, and anyway, so I realized what it was. I got this uh, CO2 and fire, fire extinguisher, fire alarm for the truck. It's a little round device. The link's in the description of the video. I think it's like 32 bucks. It has a 10-year battery. And as long as you place it someplace where it's not covered up by something, anywhere in your little truck, because people think these trucks are big on the inside. They're, they're the size of a small bathroom. That's all they are. So that, that will pick up both things. But then I want you to think about, let's think about this. Let's put this one back up. Let's put this one back up. Because I saw a truck catch on fire. Let's put this one back up. I saw a truck catch on fire. It was on my channel. There's a video about it. Imagine if you were this guy and your truck caught on fire. You're dead asleep. I don't know how some of you sleep, but I'm a hard sleeper when I'm sleeping. I sleep light in some ways, but when I hit that REM stage, I mean, I, I'm a, and now your truck catches on fire from whatever. Maybe this, I don't know what, what the reasoning was. 
But so many truck fires, wait till I tell you one of the other problems on truck fires. This guy wakes up maybe, I don't know. I don't know if he was in a sleeper cab or not, but look what happened to the other trucks. So even people around you can cause you to have problems. And you, all you're, you're surrounded by a bunch of polymer, very flammable polymer composite. That's all these truck cabs are. They're not steel. You know, you think they are, they're not steel. Look what's left of this guy's tractor. There's nothing left. So the fire was right over top of him. Now, let me show you this because some of you folks, I'm talking about CO2 and, hold on, and fire. Let me find this one. Wait till you hear this one. This is on, this is on July 3rd, 2020. And I'll put all these links, I'll try to put all these links in the description of the video. Why are they seeing more truck fires, okay, from USA Trucking? The new emissions systems are causing problems, okay? These filters do not eliminate the bad. They hold on to it for a period till they're burned off at a higher temperature. The burn off is known as the regeneration phase. We all know that. The computers or truck's computer engages whenever the filter is restricted or full. Normally, this is done while the truck is parked and idling, normally. And again, I'll, let me make this full screen while I read this portion. Because this is going to blow your mind. Let me take let me take Keith off while we read this. Okay. The engine revs up and the filter increases temp to well above 1,000 degrees. During the cycle, the, Trump, the trucks dump smoke out of the stack and the smell is horrible. We, anybody that's done a regen knows this. Once it's done, the truck re re returns to normal operation. You can shut it off. Okay. But the more the truck idles or you're in stop and go traffic, the more the computer wants to do a regeneration. OK, the way the system is set up, the regen can happen while you drive. But let's get to the part where if you are shifting or going up and down in RPMs, the exhaust can flash like a giant backfire. This has caused multiple fires originating from the filter system. Nearly all fires, listen to this, start on the on the engine in front of the exhaust filter. And even though this has been a safety issue with the EPA, most of the new truck fires have these filtering systems. Now, let me go back to this. So now not just you driving a tractor trailer, not just worrying about four wheelers, not just worrying about the cargo you handle, not just worrying about driving in the snow. I've seen some videos of snow this week up in the Northwest. Now, now you got to figure when your truck, even if it's a, if it's a newer truck, and it catches on fire. Like the video on my channel, I was coming out of the Loves going down 85 South into Atlanta. It's probably been when I was with GNP still. So it's been at least three and a half years ago. When I pulled by her, she was on the entrance ramp to the, inter the interstate. As I pulled by her, and I think she was a, a CRST doesn't sound right, but she was with a company we all know, not a bad thing, good thing. I'm just I'm trying to think of the company's name, but I pulled by her and her truck was on fire. She was in a sleeper cat and she was standing about 15 feet in front of it. And I pulled by her, pulled over. She jumped in my cab and I'm like, I'm not going to go try and fight that thing because number one, I don't know if it's an electrical fire. I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's a fuel fire. I have no idea. And I don't want to go boom. So I told her to get in the cab. Police began showing up. But I mean, she was literally, she said, I had no time to grab anything. She said, I'm driving, you know, she's coming down. I got chills when I said that. She was such a sweet girl. So I'm driving down the entrance ramp to get on 85. And she's on the entrance ramp, pulled over to the right-hand side. And she's 15, 20 feet in front of her truck. It's cold. And the truck's on fire. Like her cab is on fire. And it's, it's engulfed at this point. Let me put a few more of you guys up. As an RN, Mary Francis, I got your lanyards out too, Mary Francis. Uh, people that have a cherry red complexion are suspicious of retaining CO2. Miss Mary Francis, if I think about that, how many truckers do I meet that even when they're standing totally still, they have a chair and they're smokers and they're overweight and they have a cherry red complexion. Thank you for that. Thank you. Tara Lee, Tara Lee, okay, Tara Lee, I'll say it that way. Thank you for the correction. Look at what Miss, look at what Miss Mary Francis is saying. They have a cherry red. I don't have that problem. I'm like I'm as white as if I if I go out in the sun right now, I'll be burned in 10 minutes. Um, cherry red complexion because of CO2, retaining CO2 in your blood. You're a smoker. You're overweight. Exacerbates the problem. Look at what Miss, Miss Mary Francis is telling you truckers. OK, Thomas Barber, he's had a few a few leaks in the past. Let's put a few more things up here. 
So now your deaf system can also cause these problems, okay? Now your deaf system can. But I want you to think about something. How many of you folks that smoke? Hold on, let me find this one. Let me see if, yep, that's the one I want to show. Look at this one. Look how much is left of this cab. The engine's left. The stacks are left that are metal. Look what's left. Look what's left of the sleeper. Look at this back area of the sleeper right here. There's nothing left. How fast would you be able to wake up, get dressed? Uh, you know, I don't know how, how youngs sleep. You know, I don't sleep with my werewolf fur on when I sleep. You have to get up. You have to get dressed. You're disoriented. There's already smoke or fire in the cab, which is just lighting on everything else in the cab. And it's also burning faster because you have a polymer composite that's made of oils. That's the plastic that's all around you in the cab. I'm not trying to scare you guys and girls that aren't in trucking yet. I'm just saying, understand, if your truck's running, you have a high probability, a higher probability than the average bear of having stuff like this happen. By the time we, I left that girl that night on the side of 85, coming down the entrance ramp to 85 South off of Love's, just as you hit the South Carolina border out of North Carolina, the, the Love's is on the left-hand side going south. Her tractor looked like this. And she had gotten out of the cab. She said, I had no time to grab anything, anything. She said it started catching on fire. It came out of the dash. I think it was probably electrical based on what she's telling me. She gets out of the cab. She grabs what she can. And she's waiting for me. And literally, she lost everything. She, she said, I lost everything. I lost my computer. I lost all my clothes, everything. And the police came. And I don't know what, I don't know what happened. I, I told her I was doing a video. She knew that. She never did contact me. OK. But anyway, I show you guys all this because when I finally got that CO2 detector in my truck, I realized how stupid I was being because we think these brand new trucks, like you're in a brand new truck, you think we're fine. You think we're fine. How many truckers do you talk to that still have problems with even a brand new truck? And if it's going to be where the truck now, again, the first woman I talked about, even when the truck bunk heater, and I doesn't say if she was running the truck bunk heater or air conditioner off of the truck idling, but she said that was what was caught. Once that turned on, it was coming through the system. So it must have been, it must have been idling because she said that the problem came from the engine block. So it must have been idling. But all of these vehicles nowadays, look at mile claimer. Look at him putting some smack up. In 2017, my fuel truck burned down under the rack due to a short on my ProStar's AC relay that was smoldering. Scary stuff. When you get a fire in a fuel rack, man, that whole place can go. That, is, that whole place can go. I tell you, that's crazy. The KS rest stop tr truck fires called. It, it was a SB35. You were on southbound 35. Okay. Who we got here? Christopher Hansen. Two more years to retire and get your CDL. Good for you. It's a good business. I just want to, I just want to like to stream my own situation in the oil field. Even in the oil field, here's another example of how you can, you know, die driving a truck. Besides being 7,000 feet in the sky with 100,000 pounds in your back coming down these inclines like this that are muddy and snowy and blizzard conditions and the roads aren't, you know, well kept and they're, they're not even gravel roads. Most of them are dirt roads. So in mud, it gets even worse. But even going up on top of the tanks, even going on top of the tanks to do the gauging for the tanks, huge, huge problem. They had people dropping all the time. They would, especially some of the people that service, like they were on site all the time, they would open a tank and they would forget to hold their breath initially and let the wind blow the, you know, the, the, the fumes away. And they would take a deep breath because maybe they were out of, out of shape. They had crawled, the, you're crawling up a 15, 20 foot ladder to get to the top of the tank, sometimes more. If you're not in shape and you're doing that and you lean down and open that tank that has all that crude oil in it, all the vapors come right up on top of you. You know, I would always try to look at where the flag was blowing. I would stand, you know, upwind of the flag as far as how it was blowing, like on the side of the tank, whichever side was upwind. And I would open the tank and let the, let the, the fumes go that way. But so many people got caught out there and you don't think about stuff like that. Like the CO2, who thinks about that? I never did until it affected me directly. Okay. Verona Moss, good to have you here. I gave a few lanyards away earlier in the stream. Um, Keith Terrell, Keith Terrell, give me a number between one and 10. Give me a number between one and 10. So this stream tonight that got cut off earlier, is this a super dangerous job? I don't know. It doesn't feel dangerous to me, but I, I've also done a little bit more than the average bear as far as militarily goes. 
but it's a, it's a good paying job. It's a good paying gig. You know, you have a higher chance of, you know, being, being injured or fatally, you know, injured driving to and from work every day. If you're a, a, a worker that drives through all the traffic, you have a higher incident of that happening. So I don't think that way, but I'm just for the CO2 monitor and the fire monitor that's in your truck, the fire detection system in your truck, same as the dash cams. And again, I have dash cam links. My Falcon Electronics is actually running across the bottom of the screen now. I have, I protect myself always. I don't care what the company has. I don't care what the company has. I'm going to have my own protection. The guy that I drove for in the oil fields, he had ghost cat. Yep. Trucking is fun and games until something serious happens. Jay, Stephanie, Magnus, depends on what you're hauling. I agree. Don't worry. I'm not going to say don't worry about 1099. I'm not sure. This is for Verona Moss. I'm not going to uh, tell you that I'm not a, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I've been 1099 for a long time with other businesses I've owned. I've been 1099 with the trucking business on and off. If you have a good accountant, you're going to be fine. Just make sure you have a good accountant. That's all I'm going to say. Make sure you have a good accountant. Um, it, it's If you're going to do this as a gig, you just need to be protected. The other thing, too, is one of the reasons I like having a layer between myself and the IRS by having an accountant. Let me give you a tip. Let me give you a life tip, business tip. This is, I think this is business tip 112, but we'll just call it business tip one, page one, paragraph one, sentence one. As long as you're not intentionally doing something to avoid paying taxes, if you have an accountant doing your taxes, you have a little bit more protection when the IRS comes knocking than the average bear because the accountant is trained on all the things you're not really going to be trained on. So that's why I've always had an accountant that did my taxes. If I was 1099, I did it. I think I did it one year, 30 years back by myself without an accountant, you know, just for the year. I'm being, I'm being serious. It's been that long back. Other than that, I have an accountant for everything for that. I'm not going to risk it. And if you have that extra layer between you and the reporting of the income and you're not intentionally trying to you know, hide income, if there's mistakes, you have you have a little bit more protection by having an accountant between you and the IRS. OK, Joanne Gamble, your truck runs 24 seven. You're teaming. I worry about a fire all the time. We have a 2021 freight liner. Listen, I'm not trying to scare anybody out here. I enjoy truck driving. I'm just saying I'm very conscious and aware now that I'm very conscious and aware of how how fast it affected me. And that was just with the stack pointing down a little bit like the stack had gone from straight up and down to maybe like that. But if you look at these stacks, even when it's straight up, that hole has an angle down anyway. When it angled another, you know, 15 degrees, it was coming straight into the truck, even though there was wind blowing here and there where I was parked. I just tell you, I just tell you, that's the reason for the stream tonight is we we have a tough enough gig out here being safe from everybody else. I'm always going to protect myself with dash cams, with, uh, did he ever put a number in, by the way? He never did, didn't he? Did he ever put a number in? Did I miss it? Did you guys put a couple more comments up? Hold on. Keith might have bounced off. Very next person hears me say this, put a number between one and 10 in the comments. Whoever puts it up, one and 10. Between one and 10. I'll wait. I'm going to give away another lanyard. And while we do that, well, I'll wait for you guys to put the comment in because it's going to take just a second. Let me grab the lanyard. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Philip Congolero, you put in three. Philip, do you have a lanyard already? Philip, do you have a lanyard? Philip, I know it's a 20 second delay. Do you have a lanyard, Philip? Philip and Christopher Hansen. Philip and Christopher Hansen and Ghost Cat. Philip, Christopher Hansen and Ghost Cat. If you do not have a lanyard, there we go, hauling and howling. Okay, Philip, you want another one or you want to give yours away? Okay. I'm going to read some comments. Let me make sure we handle these lanyard giving away. Philip, do you you want another one or you want to give it away? Give it away, give it away, give it away now. I can't tell if you're saying yes to give it away or yes, you want another one. Give it. 
Okay? We'll give it away. We'll give it away. Hold on one second. I'm going to scroll up. Who did I just miss? Danny Tillman. Danny Tillman, do you have a lanyard yet? Danny Tillman, if you don't have a lanyard yet, send me your shipping address to support at redvikingtrucker.com. Holland and Howland. Holland and Howland. And just so you know, I spelled Holland wrong intentionally because I wanted to have a W in each word. Okay. It was spelled wrong intentionally. So that's, you just got that from Philip Congolero. You're welcome to thank Philip in the comments. I'm going to bounce off of here and want to do the stream tonight. Just be safe out there, man. L live better, eat better, be better mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, treat people better. It's, it's funny how you always get back what you give out. You always get back in life what you give out. Isn't that crazy? It's like, there's no, there's nothing to, it's just crazy. Okay, Danny, just send me your shipping address to support at redvikingtrucker.com. Let me put that in there. It can be a, it can be a, a hold on. It can be a, a physical address or a post office box. So send me your shipping address to support at redvikingtrucker.com. I will give. Marie Sonoma, you were the girl on the ramp with, K, it was KLLM. Was it you? Marie, was that you? You're, you're being totally serious. Oh, you're, it wasn't you. You're saying the girl on the ramp was K, with KLM. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. You've been a longtime channel watcher. That's from Marie, Marie Sonoma. Marie, Marie, just because you've been watching that long and you participated? Because life is a participation sport. Send me your shipping address to support at redvikingtrucker.com. If I do not get your shipping addresses by, what is today? Today is Sunday. By Wednesday. For the people on tonight's stream, if you don't send me your shipping address by Wednesday and you forget about me and you, know, you go away and do something else, you come back in a year and you watch that stream, go, oh, I want to land your, no, you got to get me your address by Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, Eastern time, <laughs> Eastern time. Listen, I'm going to get rocking and rolling. Uh, just everything I can tell you, man, just be careful on it and be careful on air. Like, I don't care if it's a brand new truck or not. I don't, doesn't matter. Hoses come loose. Fittings come loose. You know, I, I watched the truck that I drove in Idaho, the long nose. Every time it went in the shop, when it came out of the shop, within 24 hours, something else went wrong almost every single time. And I'm talking about we replaced the whole air conditioning system. We replaced the whole turbo system. And normally, if things were going to go wrong, it was going to happen when the truck just came out of the shop. That's amazing. Okay. So, yeah, Perry B, I, the, other, the very first stream I did tonight, for some reason, the whole stream just locked up. So I just deleted the whole video. But I, I've given away, I think, seven or eight lanyards tonight. We talked about some good stuff. Every link for you folks that need to get some gear for your trucker, your trucker lover, or just trucker family, redvikingtrucker.com. There's links for headsets. There's links for, pill, for uh, seat pillows. I say seat pillows because I have a couple different ones. Like I switch up. If I'm going to be driving for eight, 10 hours, I'll use one for five hours that has a certain contour, then I'll switch up and use a second one because I like to keep my butt nice and comfortable. So it's just, I'm telling you, great, great. The, the link for this CO2 fire monitor for your tractor that has a 10 year battery is in the description of the video. Get one. It's what I've been using since that, that happened to me. I'm going to bounce. Appreciate you guys being here, guys and girls being here. I've given away a lot of lanyards tonight. Please get yours. Make sure you send me your shipping address. And uh, Red Viking Trucker, Werewolf Trucker, I am out. <laughs>